In today's Eye on Health, questions about the coronavirus pandemic, because the more we get into this, really the more questions that we have. It's absolutely true. So we are going to get some answers. We are talking with Dr. Arvin Venkat via Skype. He is an emergency physician at AHN. He is also president of the Pennsylvania College of Emergency Physicians. And first off, thank you for being with us, doctor. We really appreciate it. Uh, and we want to ask you really what you're seeing right now to get us started. I mean, here in our area, we have probably not reached anywhere close to the peak of cases that you're expecting, but what, what are you seeing right now? Well, thanks for having me back. I work in one of our local emergency departments over the weekend, and what we're seeing are more patients with symptoms of COVID-19, some of whom are seriously ill, but we're seeing less patients overall in emergency departments because of the social distancing that we're practicing. More people are staying home, they're staying safe, um, which is a great combination for patients um, because right now we are prepared uh, for an influx that we hope never comes, but we're prepared to take care of those patients. Doctor, if, if some people are, who are sick are not getting tested, they're being told if your symptoms are, are you know, within reason, stay at home, self-isolate -is yourself, uh, how will we ever know whether they had coronavirus? I mean, if they're not tested and they get better, how will we know? So the good news is, is that for most people, they will get better on their own. Um, it's a great question. And probably earlier in all of this, if we had widespread testing, it would have been beneficial to know every single person who has this disease. At this point, with it being so widespread and what, with what we call community spread, where it's really spreading in the community, testing people who may have mild symptoms and get over it uh, may not be as beneficial in terms of controlling the illness as the social distancing that we're practicing now. Now, doctor, and so that, that's, that's a good answer to that. Um, so if you've already had the virus and you think that you've recovered, how do you know when it's safe to go outside? So the recommendations from the Department of Health and from the CDC is that for most people, the course of this illness is about two weeks. And they start off with no symptoms or extraordinarily mild symptoms. They get, then get somewhat milder symptoms, more severe symptoms, and then they recover. Um, so if you're two weeks from the onset of symptoms and at least three days without a fever, and that, include, that means not treating a fever with Tylenol or ibuprofen, then you are likely in the recovery phase and can remove yourself from quarantine. But you should also talk to your primary care physician because there are some nuances and differences that could exist. Doctor, you mentioned fever there, and we keep hearing that as one of the main symptoms. But can you have this and never actually have a fever? So as with any viral illness, the symptoms can be quite varied. Uh, fever is the most common symptom, but some patients only have a cough. Some patients only have body aches. Um, and unfortunately, some patients who get more severely ill have a combination of a number of these symptoms. So. Uh, long answer short, the answer is yes, but fever is still the most common symptom. So, Doctor, there are a lot of pregnant women who are close to their due date, and a lot of them are concerned. Like, will they catch the virus in the hospital? Will there be enough beds for them? So, the good news is, is that for most pregnant women, um, the evidence is, is that they are not severely affected by this illness and that the virus doesn't transmit readily uh, to their fetuses, to their newborn children. Um, I am confident that the healthcare community here in Western Pennsylvania is well aware of the needs of pregnant women and that all of those resources are there um, and that they should be following up with their OBGYNs and they should be following up um, with the necessary care to make sure that they have a healthy uh, result of their pregnancy. Oh, could they be separated from their newborn if they have COVID? Uh, so I'm not an OBGYN, so I'm not going to get into all the details of what may or may not happen, but I, I know that the general practice always is to try and keep mothers and babies together as much as possible. Doctor, you know, some people are saying you might be able to carry the, this virus in on your shoes, on the soles of your shoes. You should leave your shoes at the front door to your house. Is that accurate? Is that something that could actually happen? So how much environmental surfaces can carry the virus is still an area that is being studied actively by the scientific community. I personally think it's a good practice for people to remove their shoes when they're entering the house, 
because it's a, a way to maintain uh, hygiene and sanitation in your house. Um, and then to immediately wash your hands before you go about your business in your house. So can pets get this or not? There's a lot of mixed information out there. And we just heard that you, sh you should distance yourself if you're sick from your pet. So I haven't seen a lot of evidence that pets can either get this disease or transmit this disease at all. Um, I would say that um, in terms of separation from your pets, uh, that's, that's a tough question, but there isn't a lot of data on pets being able to transmit this disease or get this disease. You know, at this point, a lot of stores are entirely sold out of like disinfecting wipes, some sanitizing products. What can people be using to to clean things at home uh, just to make sure that it's as clean as possible? So there are some recipes that are recommended by public health authorities of using a small amount of household bleach mixed in with water to clean surfaces effectively. Um, and I, I apologize, I forget whether it's a cup or a few cups of bleach mixed in with a bucket of water, but that combination has been found to be effective. And if you're going to the grocery store, do you have any tips on protecting yourself? So a lot of the grocery stores are putting up barriers in order to try and maintain this hygiene as much as possible. Uh, I think common sense is the key, is to wash your hands as you're entering the grocery store. Almost all of them have hand sanitizer. Maintain social distance. Uh, when I went to a grocery store this weekend, they had marked out six feet at the checkout aisle so that you can maintain that distance. Um, if you are buying things, obviously, at the grocery store, when you come off uh, home, uh, wipe off the surfaces of any containers before you put them away and use them for whatever uh, you bought. All right. Thank you so much, doctor, for this information. And also just thank you for what you do during this time because doctors and, and medical professionals are always important, but especially right now, we really appreciate you. Thank you and stay safe. All right. You too. Great. Thanks, Dr. Venkhead, for joining us on National Doctors' Day and to all the medical professionals for what you are doing to keep us safe. Absolutely. And remember to keep watching our Eye on Health series right here on PTL. Happens on Wednesdays normally, and it's brought to you by Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield, together with Allegheny Health Network for your health.